Hello and welcome to the MBS Show Reviews. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. All these squares form a circle. All these squares form a circle. Uh, how? I, I don't get it. You will. Oh no. And also joining us today is Sapphire Heart Song. Boy. Hmm? I got nothing to say. All it's right. A we're, we're so unworthy of conversation right now. <laughs> I know. Don't be yourself! Don't be yourself? Oh my. Oh my. So, anyhow, in today's review, we are going to review Season 7, Episode 21, Marks and Recreation. So, in this episode, the Cutie Mark Crusader starts a Cutie Mark Day Camp, only to find out that one of their campers doesn't want a Cutie Mark. La Gasp! So before we head into the review, let's go for first impressions. Silver, what do you think, my friend? Well, this is an episode where you just sort of like, wait, what? How are they doing this? I mean, it's a fun idea. A day camp where all these foals, a ton of new foal models, g- get to do events. But then you're like, how are three fillies running this without any supervision? When did Thunderlane become a Wonderbolt? And when did Rumble become so... Harumph. <laughs> Rumble, you seemed so sweet when you were first introduced. Oh, they grow up so fast, I blame the hip-hop. <laughs> Are you sure it's not um, rock? Well, how dare you? Mod Pie would be offended at, at your slander against Boulder. Oh, I'm not yeah. talking about that rock. It's rock and roll. Slandering against me, then. Well, rocks roll. Norman, you're, you're talking crazy talk. Everyone, I'm sorry. Norman has clearly gone mentally insane for the day. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, this has been the MBS show. We're called on account of insanity. Oh, no, no, no. We're good. We're good. We're good. Uh, insanity is doing the same thing, expecting something else to happen. Yeah, I don't really accept that definition when I've had plenty of people scream gibberish at me. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, uh, is that your thoughts, Silla? Well, there is a risk with the Cutie Mark Day Camp, but we'll get into that when we're talk about the episode proper mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and seppi what about you i don't know what it was about like uh this episode i didn't like it really not. maybe it's because i have bad experiences with big game for the fact that i didn't like rumble's attitude throughout the entire episode i don't know i just didn't enjoy it i wanted to enjoy it but i didn't all right then and as for me this episode was a bunch of fun Believe it or not, I kind of watched this episode, the rewatch for the review, uh, a bit late. So it's kind of fresh in my mind. And I like how they approach it. And a callback from the episode... Um, what was the episode where they did a callback to... Hmm, we'll give it a second. Fame and Misfortune? Yes, that they, one. They, hint, they hinted at it. This in that episode. Yeah. In my mind, they connected the dots in there. Like, oh, that's so cool. And I had to think about it again. And like, wait, how long this this did this day camp happen? And what's the timeline for this? I'm so confused. <laughs> but still, this episode was a bunch of fun. Rumble, yeah, the big jerk. But Thunder Lane, yeah, everything's fun. Like, this is a bunch of fun. What can I say without spoiling it? Yeah, I like it. We just have to go deep into the review to well, talk about it more. So if you guys have not watched this episode yet, please go and watch. We'll wait. Welcome back. I hope you enjoy the episode. So we start off with the CMCs guiding a foal about the art of drawing. Um, I think it was uh, life art, something like that? Or painting. She and again, all these squares form a circle. <laughs> yes, yes. But still, um, uh, who here now? Um, Kettle Corn was it? Yeah, Kettle Corn here enjoys drawing the circle. She's really good at it. Well, cutie marks are sort of a circular logic. What's your destiny? What do you like to do? I like to do this. Well, that must be your destiny. Oh well, no! But it's not. And that is the theme of this episode, where your cutie mark doesn't defy what you do. What? That doesn't define who you are. Mm, true, that too. I I, oh, I always fall back on Terry Pratchett's. Talent just defines what you do. It doesn't define who you are. Yeah, true that, true that. Mm. 
And well, Kettle Corn here didn't get her cutie mark in drawing circles, so she uh, and the cutie marks call it a day because well they need to rest too. And by getting rest, they had to turn away a few foals from helping them to get their cutie marks. So yeah, sorry about that. Uh, it's always worse when you're like the next in line and they have to call it good. It's like no. Yeah. Yep. I waited three hours for an Xbox One. Oh, curse us. Well, in that case, you were just setting yourself up for disappointment anyway. Oh, curse us. <laughs> and now all the Xbox fans hate me. <laughs> I played Halo Halo 5. Did you enjoy it? Bitter. Not really. <laughs> oh, you go you go play Destiny then. <laughs> oh, wow, Garvin. You're hitting below the belt now. <laughs> okay, Destiny 2 then. <laughs> oh, so, oh, 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 what, what cruelty. <laughs> <laughs> when, when did when, Norman? When did you become so vexed? Oh, since I became old and cranky. <laughs> but anywho, the CMCs didn't like that they had to turn away fools from helping, so they decided to do a cutie mark day camp. Yay! And I, I think that the line that they use is something along. Uh, we can use the old place that Applejack used. And the old place is at Camp Friendship, where Applejack and Colortura hook up. <laughs> hook up. What? Oh, oh, now you're shipping Norman. Hey, I don't mind that ship, y'all. So, yeah. Uh, this episode is full of callbacks to older episodes that are, well, not really... What's the word I'm looking for? Subtle. It's really subtle. It's not like they're not blatantly stating... Oh yeah, Applejack went to that place with Coloratura, who we sang with after she went through a reformation and changed her branding. Yep. <laughs> why are you t- Why are you telling us all this? <laughs> because I'm very bored. <laughs> Exposition. Uh, but still, the next day they set up a table, balloons and flags and whatnot, and say, "Hey guys, we're doing a day camp for uh, blank flanks who needs help with their cutie marks. So come on, come all." And Rumble here is a bit shy of the matter and yeah it's not interested because he's too cool for camp yeah. and meanwhile Thunderlane looks at his like hmm I'm pondering oh my god I'm pondering this is my thinking <laughs> face <laughs> yes what what is this uh Sefi I I have nightmares about like uh day camps and whatnot I did not enjoy going to them <laughs> why did you even go in the first place and what kind of day camp did you go it, it was more like a daycare like oh. center type of place, but it was played off like a knockoff day camp. Mm-hmm. My parents mm-hmm. had, well, work and whatnot to ah. do over the summer, and yeah, they they stuck me there every day of the week. Daycare then, all right. It was not fun. Uh, no comment on that one. But still, uh, the next day, I'm, I'm assuming this is the next day, by the way, day camp starts. And the Kingdom of Crusaders welcomes everyone and telling them, Hey, every pony, we got a bunch of activities like kayaking, horse tr- throwing, uh, circle drawing, and many more. And no adult supervision. What? Yeah. Circle throwing? Drawing. Circle throwing. Circle drawing? What are you talking about? It's circle drawing and horseshoe throwing. Oh, drawing. Okay, got it. Uh, boys. But anywho, Thunderling comes in with Rumble, and Rumble feels betrayed by his brother because Rumble thought that Thunderling's bringing him to the Wonderbolt's training sting for whatever it is. And no, he told him, I'm going, you're staying here. Have fun! And My brother! What? I- no! And I know that we saw Thunderling as a Wonderbolt in um, Top Bolt, but. This all seems kind of unceremonious. Like a second Ponyville Pegasi has joined this elite rank. Rainbow Dash hasn't said a thing about it yet. In all honesty, uh, Thunderlane, I think Thunderlane is the only Pegasus in Ponyville to become a Wonderbolt. Technically, Rainbow Dash is Cloudsdale. Ah, but she lives in Ponyville and very much identifies there. She may have been conflicted, but she flew for Ponyville in the Equestria games. Mm, True, true. Uh, that's semantics. That's uh, whatever it is. But still, uh, it's cool to have um, Thunderlane here. And 
<laughs> I just like how Scootaloo is saying, hey, um, me and Rainbow Dash are practically sisters and she's a Wonderbolt too and nobody gives a... Nobody cares. Very much. <laughs> ah, famous fickle. Yep. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, oh, Rainbow Dash, isn't she the one that messed up that show in Ponyville? Ew, I don't want to be associated with her. <laughs> oh, that'd be harsh. I know. Oh, famous and fickle Eesh. mistress. <clears throat> so, anywho, after Thunder Lane leaves, uh, they start day camp. Yay! So, starting activities. Yeah. <laughs> so, starting activities with horseshoe, horseshoe throwing, um, and stuff. And Rumble's first up to bat. And, oh, he didn't make it. Oh, too bad. So, everyone else is having fun and so on. So, from horseshoe throwing to kayaking to archery to I'm assuming this is square dance to haiku writing and yay kettle corn got her cutie mark in haikuing uh, backing up for just one sec I'm looking at the uh, the Wikipedia gallery for this episode mm-hmm. and there's a perfect image of Scootaloo uh, giving Rumble a pep talk but all I can see is that caption ponies ponies <laughs> everywhere <laughs> oh yeah 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 Let's see if I can properly copy a link to this. Uh, that, yeah, that looks good, man. Uh, I didn't notice that. <laughs> or you could do shipping. Shipping everywhere. Because you've got a young colt and three mares, or three fillies, and you just think, who will the audience ship him with? Do, 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 do. I mean, he and Scootaloo are both Pegasi, so there's that. But then Sweetie Belle's going to get really mad at him. Mm-hmm. And we all know that if you get mad at someone, you you must obviously like them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. But anywho, getting back on track, um, after all the activities that are done, Rumble seems to be very bad at them. Mm. His silent protest. Nothing more than whoops. Yep. So, after Kettle Corn gets her cutie mark, they all uh, go home for the day. And yay, everybody's happy. But the CMCs are a bit worried about Rumble because he doesn't seem like he's having fun. So, they decide to visit him and give him a pep talk about, Hey, don't worry. Maybe you'll find something you'll enjoy tomorrow and stuff. And to this, Rumble says, uh-uh, I don't want to get a cutie mark. I want to be a blank flank forever. Yeah. I don't want to grow up. I'm a Toys R Us kid. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> Ouch, too soon. Too soon. <laughs> oh, funny story. No, not too soon. Perfect timing. Oh, funny story about that one, Silver. Toys R Us in Southeast Asia are still open. Well, well it for you. <laughs> yes, I do. Well, that's for you, Norman. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> There's a handful of toys left that I can play with. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, but, <clears throat> Silver, what were we talking about again before Toys R Us came out? <laughs> we were talking about Rumble doesn't want a cutie mark ever. Oh, yes. Mm. Which, which the Crusader's like, gasp. You do not want a cutie mark? Harumph. Harumphity, rumphity, rumph. And uh, the logic for this one is is that Rumble doesn't want to... Well, he explains to the Cutie Mark Crusader that um, having a Cutie Mark uh, puts you in a box and destines you to do that thing um, forever. So I don't want to do that. And in my mind, it goes, there is logic in that. There is logic in what he says. I mean, uh, technically, the Crusaders have witnessed this with Trouble Shoes. He wanted to be in the rodeo, mm-hmm. but as Cutie Mark said, nah, you got to be a clown. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't really. It, it, so, yeah, there is a certain imprisonment. But at the same time, too, it, it's one of those things. Okay, um, we're going to sidetrack for a bit because we need to talk about Cutie Marks. So, there is a logic there because, okay, Trouble Shoes loves the rodeo. But he doesn't really do all the normal rodeo stuff because he's bad at those rodeo stuff. What he's good at is becoming a rodeo clown. So that's, well, what he does and enjoys in the future, I'm not sure. But rarity here is different. Her destiny or her cutie mark is finding gems in the wild. But she's very talented at making clothes and whatnot. And Pinkie Pie here 
is a good baker and her cutie mark is all about making people happy. So there's a correlation between Trouble Shoes and the rest of the ponies. Well, in truth, it, it all seems to sort of shift. I've often complained about the, um, the, the changing nature of cutie marks. What started as just a mark of special talent became even more personal. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I like to use this as an example. We all went to college or, or currently in college to do our degree in something. For me, it was multimedia. For you, Silver, I think it was uh, multimedia or graphic design. Multimedia. A lot of stuff came after. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and Seppi, you were doing the same thing too? Uh, visual communication, yes. All right. So we all went to college doing something to do with uh, basically multimedia. What we so, like. Yeah. And then in the end, in the end, I have this one friend. Uh, he went to the same college as me, but he took graphic design. Now he works in the post office as a clerk. And he does have his photo degree, but he takes photos of places that needs to be fixed and whatnot for the post office and whatnot. So you get that jarring thing where you go to college to learn this, but when you go to the real world, you're not doing the things that you're studying. So it applies to this one too in some sense of logic. I'll have to mull that over because I guess that's the other frustration. The ponies don't study. The market says, oh, you're just naturally good at this. Yeah, that's the thing too because if you're naturally good at something is going to be easy for you. It's something similar to Sorin. He's not a natural flyer, so he has to work hard at it. But the question is, what does his cutie mark represent? Well, let's see. If I remember right, it's the Wonder. It is the Wonderbolts logo, a little bit with a little stylized background. So he could be a Wonderbolts fanboy. That'd be something. Oh, wouldn't that be? Your destiny <laughs> is to stay locked up and collect memorabilia. <laughs> Best destiny ever. <laughs> oh boy. But still, uh, we can have a we can have its own discussion for this one about what do we do or what do cutie mark represent and whatnot. But I think we should carry on. And thank you, Seppi, because she has shown us Soren's cutie mark, and it looks like a cloud with a thunderbolt sticking through it. The Wonderbolt Thunderbolt. Mm-hmm. Why does it have to be the Wonderbolt Thunderbolt? Huh? <laughs> do you know of anyone else who uses a thunderbolt? Rainbow Dash. Rainbow Dash? <laughs> I mean, any organization. The electric company? <laughs> oh, that doesn't count. <laughs> oh, oh, what now? It doesn't count now. We're deciding. Wait, wait. Just because something has a Thunderbolt sticking to it doesn't mean it has to do with Wonderbolt stuff. Then again, <laughs> I'm just going to stop. I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. No, man. No, man. You should go, you should go on. You should go on. But. No. <laughs> But anyway, no, I keep finding contradictions in myself <laughs> through this impulsive argument. <laughs> but let's carry on. Uh, if anybody's interested in us doing a discussion about the QD marks, do let us know in the comments below. Maybe we'll mull over it and see how. Wait a minute, Flash Sentry has a thunderbolt in his QD mark. Oh, uh, you mean on his car? Three. <laughs> 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 I mean, the actual cutie mark. And we all saw in the deleted scenes of uh, a Forgotten Friendship how bored he was as a real guard. Yeah. Clearly, he has missed his calling. Yep. Oh, man, that scene was cute. <laughs> but wait, why did that? Now, you know what? I'm not going to question that. It's a review for another day. Let's carry on. So, anywho, after the revelation that Grumble doesn't want to have a cutie mark, the CMCs are like, he's crazy. He's talking crazy talk. He's crazy. And they leave him be. Rumble goes to the field where the mm, Pegasus were training for the Hurricane? Hurricane Fluttershy episode? Remember that one? Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. They were training in that field. And Rumble is preparing some clouds to do stunts. And before he could execute his stunts, his big brother came in and blocked him. What a jerk. Ah, bro, why give me a flight blocker? Yeah. But... uh, Yeah. but, But Thunderlane... Asked Rumble, hey, how did you enjoy the camp? And he says, oh, nah, I was dumb and stupid. It was for babies. Eh, didn't have fun. And somehow Thunderlane interpreted as, hey, you'll be good at it. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. And Rumble has the idea that it ain't going to be fun. I'm scheming. This is my scheming face. <laughs> so the next day, 
the Cunema Crusaders are making jam with the rest of the blank flanks. And yeah, even though Pip here didn't get his cutie mark, but he still enjoys the doing of the jams. Yeah. Yeah, Kettle Corn here, even though she, well, got her cutie mark, she still enjoys doing the jam making process and she does enjoy drawing circles, but she's really good at haikus. That's all. And then Pip here is worried. Hey, if, if, uh, if I like something, does that mean that there's going to be my destiny and whatnot? And Rumble comes in looking cocky and whatnot and says, yes, yes, that's what you're going to do. If you get a key remark, that's what you're going to do for the rest of your life. So be prepared. And yeah, sounds about right. Yeah, and start song. And I have something in my mind that came out pretty interesting because hmm, catchy tune, song number, everybody's singing. And then talking about how you don't want to get a cutie mark and whatnot. Wouldn't it be funny and ironic if he got a cutie mark for singing about not getting a cutie mark? It'd be funny if he got an equal sign cutie mark. <laughs> I mean, Starlight Glimmer is, is watching this from far like, Oh, that's my affiliated young stallion. No, that's not right. She's past that already. Oh, but she she could see it in the next generation. Oh, the cutie mark struggle continues. <laughs> oh, no. And then people see, oh, Starlight's in an episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anywho, what do you guys have to say about this song and dance? It was annoying. I didn't like it. Really? No. Moving on. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's funny that when sort of the antagonist is singing a song, he's not really delighting in being evil which is what often makes villains songs so much fun so and also the fact that everyone just sort of goes along because of one song actually oh what, what is it marge simpson in uh well the simpsons right after they played the song we put the spring in springfield mm -hmm. it was it was a really good song it changed all our minds oh well i have a song too uh morals morals <laughs> Where would we be without Mon? Don't. <laughs> uh, but still, uh, I I don't know. I like the song. The song, um, had that jazzy tune. It was pretty fun. I like it. But still, um, Silver, you got anything else to add in? Well, I mean, it's fun to see them going all over the place. I mean, uh, showing the archery. Which, again, ponies and archery just sounds like a recipe for disaster. Yeah, especially if you mean Hanzo. Well, there there you just get nerfed and get rid of that stupid scattershot arrow like they should have from the start. <laughs> Snake charming with a what looks like a cobra. It's like, why are there no adults here? <laughs> okay, do we want to address the adult in the room? Or not in the room? Not in the room. There, there are There's no adult supervision. Ponies are incredibly irresponsible. I have to agree with you there. And you want to talk irresponsible? What about the humans in Camp Everfree? Well, you've got Gloriosa, I got this. And even worse is Timber Spruce. Oh, my sister's being influenced by dark magic. Hey, you're cute. <laughs> uh, and okay, they're camp counselors. Okay. Um, are you two the only adults? Wait, wait, wait. How old are you now? Well, Timber is apparently like 18 years old. Uh-huh. Okay, you know what? I'm not going to continue that train of thought because he's dating Twilight. Mm. Yeah, but there's not like a huge age difference between them. But how is he a camp counselor at that young age? Yeah. yeah. So, anyway. 18 isn't even that bad, Norman. No, I'm, you know what? Yeah, whatever. Meanwhile, Rumble just divides the place in half by this is the line. You cross it, you die. Yeah, and that's and that there is just dumb because in my head, like, oh, you want to have your own camp? Go register. It'll take you weeks. Have fun. But well, oh god, then you get into the logistics. Do the Crusaders register this place? Do they collect fees? How are they affording this? I know. This is where we're meant to just go just repeat to yourself it's just a show. I should really just relax. What was, what was that MST3K mantra? That was it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just repeat to yourself, it's just a show. I should really just relax. Or oh, Mystery Science Theater 3000. <laughs> what did you do with the other 2,999, huh? Huh? <laughs> 
Uh, yeah. <coughs> but still, <coughs> it's just a show you just you just should relax. That, that's what we're going in here for. So, <laughs> but I I can't. I mean, that's just the, the, the I I'm feeling very relaxed while still asking what the hey. I am too. I, at least I'm hoping for an adult to be there as the guard keeps or whatnot. I mean, the general stuff, you, you know, but we ain't getting that. Maybe they're busy inside doing file taxes or whatnot. Tax season's coming soon, right? It'd be funny if Gloriosa Daisy's pony counterpart was running this place. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but anywho, after Rumble divides the line, the uh, blank flank crew are doing their own thing and Scootaloo is spying on them and them asking what are they doing well technically nothing different they're doing the same thing that they're doing here but only in the woods eh pretty much we're gonna start a revolution we're basically doing what we did before just different scenery and where's everyone getting these fun looking spy glasses I mean these are those are top end (laughs) Maybe at the Spyglass store? Well, why not? They've got a Quills and Sofa store. Probably. So, uh, Sweetie Belle says, Never mind. We'll talk to... We have to be calm and collective and talk to them nicely. Cutscene, Sweetie Belle's just <laughs> screaming at Trumbull. I like that dynamic. And the shipping commences. Yay! That earlier scene she- that you showed. Shipping. Shipping everywhere. Everywhere. So, the girls try to talk some sense on to the ponies, and yeah, they seem to not agree or not want to do what the CMC says because they don't want to get a cutie mark. They want to be blank flanks forever. So yeah, at the blank flank camp, they are doing things that they enjoy, and horseshoe pony has a realization that oh no, if I'm doing this. I might get my cutie marks. And Rumble says, stop everything and not do anything that could get you your cutie marks. Yeah. Hi, bye. Yeah. Bye, bye. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but anywho, uh, the CMCs are pondering why the hey this is happening. And Scootaloo here has an idea. And they talk to Thunderlane about it. And... After that quick summarization by Sweetie Belle, it seems that Thunderlane here understands the situation that, oh no, this is not really my fault, but I feel somehow responsible for this because uh, ever since I became a Wonderbolt, Rumble only wants to follow in my footsteps and not try anything, so I must change this. And Apple Bloom has an idea. You know what? I got an idea. Follow me. We're going to use emotional manipulation. Huzzah! Yay! And I I will say this screenshot of the kids just lying there in the grass, not doing (laughs) anything, that describes the uh, hiatus between seasons pretty well. (laughs) Indeed. Everyone's just lying there face down, dying. Indeed. So, talking about the boredom kids at the blank flank camp, uh, the CMC shouts something about, Hey guys, we got a special guest coming. Everybody interested, cross that line. And guess who came? Thunderlane. Thunderlane coming in and saying that, Hey guys, a special guest um, camper is Thunderlane. He's going to be with you guys. And the other ponies are excited because, hey, they get to... Mingle with a Wonderbolt. Yay, ain't that cool. Except for the rainbow one. She's just trash. Yeah, rainbow who? <laughs> yeah, rainbow what? <laughs> uh, so, anywho, after doing some fun activities like tug of war and horseshoe throwing and even building the castle of friendship out of lollipop sticks, uh, Rumble seems to join them because the CMCs introduce a obstacle course a la Wonderbolt style, but only on the ground because some people can't fly. Which is good. I I wish Rainbow Dash had followed that when she had the Iron Ma- Iron uh, Mare triathlon with Applejack, an Iron Pony rather. Mm. Oh my! Oh, that one season that one. Was season Indeed. season one. Yep, it's still there. She cheated. I know. <laughs> uh, but still, um, after discovering this, Rumble 
swallow his pride and cross the line and went for the obstacle course only to notice that his brother is at the side cooking. And Rumble asked his brother, why are you cooking? Uh, why are you not doing the obstacle course? And Thunderling just says, you know, I enjoy cooking. <laughs> and Rumble just says, since when? And Thunderling explains, um, at Wonderball Camp, we all take turns to cook, and I find it relaxing and enjoyable. So, I'm doing it. I wish I had time to discover other things besides flying because I might get, I might learn something about it, or I might expand my horizon on hobbies and stuff. So yeah, I'm a I'm a Wonderball flyer. I fly fast, but I like to cook. So yay. And I know that you will find something that you'll enjoy too. And then he and then he gives the most infamous eyebrow wiggle, which could be misapplied to so many situations. <laughs> yeah. So um, before the episode ends, this uh, Colonel Corn, Colonel Corn, right? Uh, kettle uh, corn or kettle corn? Yes, candy corn. Right, kettle corn. So kettle corn. Uh, tells Apple Bloom that, yo, this is a really good idea. And um, who knew that obstacle course were fun in haiku? I don't know how to do haiku, so I'm just spitballing here. And the CMCs uh, notice Rumble and ask, hey, yo, Rumble, you don't want to try out the obstacle course? It's fun. And Rumble says, nah, I'll try that tomorrow. Today I want to cook. Cooking, cooking is fun. And I borrow wiggle. Oh, that's creepy. I borrow wiggle. Beep, beep, beep. And episode ends. Yay! Yay! <laughs> so, let's hit into final thoughts. Silver, what do you think, man? That was a fun episode. I, I did mention that there was a danger in the in the Key Mark Day camp, so let me just go into that. There was a follow-up comic with IDW mm -hmm. where in one day they got like three cutie marks just on the first day of the camp. Which comic was this one again? Uh well not well now you're making me look it up God sorry Norman, because I forgot up. how dare you Norman I'm offended oh, no I'm sorry I didn't mean to Err, that's right we're we're all pissy now uh, <laughs> let's see here comics 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 it's always so hard to find there we go friendship is magic this was lilac lily lilac lily why do I remember that name so this was in Friendship, Friendship is Magic, Magic issue 60. One six? Six zero. No, six zero. All right, okay. Six, 60. 60. 60. Oh, her. And, yes. And as, but on this day at camp, they got like three cutie marks right off the bat. And in this one, they only got one on the first day. But given that these three had to learn, explore, make a lot of trial and error, there's a little bit of a concerned that suddenly earning a cutie mark is almost like a production factory <laughs> just go here try a bunch of stuff and boom you 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 get it and i just feel like ah, that seems to undermine their personal discovery aspect mm, true true and yeah i can see the problem there so i mean it's a fun episode rumble he's kind of playing the the hotshot punk for a while which doesn't do much to to endear him but at the end, he seems to mellow out. So, and hey, they've got a... Wait, Vincent Tong played Young Rumble, didn't he? I don't remember. Let me double check. If it, I, I thought it was Thunderlane, but let me double check. Voiced by Ashley Ball in Season 2, Episode 22. Vincent Tong in Season 7, Episode 21, yes. And Thunderlane is voiced Aha. by uh, Trevor Duvall. Huh, okay. Aha. So, I just find it... Poor Vincent Tong. He always seems to go for, he always seems to get the roles where the guy's either unliked or is the antagonist. Mm -hmm. And just like, why Thunderlade? Why? <laughs> why Rumble? <laughs> Vincent Tong is nice. Give him a good character. I know. And you know, please. And you you know what? Um, he also voiced Prince Blue Blood. <laughs> I know, right? Just kidding. The point still stands. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, but still, yeah. The this episode was yeah. This, this, uh, before I uh, jump in, silver. Anything else to add? Nope. Mm, all right. I'm geek. All right, all right. right. Seppi, what about you? I guess I didn't enjoy this episode as much. Uh, personal experiences and whatnot. You guys know me. 
everything's all about the personal experiences. <laughs> and it, it just, I don't know, it didn't appeal to me as much. Like, I found myself, like, watching the TV just pressing the skip button, mostly. Like, during this episode, like, yeah, that happened, yeah, that happened, okay, whatever, I don't care. Huh, that yeah, bad, eh? Eh, I don't know, it just wasn't for me. Any reason why specifically? Because it's still a pony episode. I mean, personal experience aside, um, why didn't you like it? I don't know, it just wasn't my thing mm. for the time. So did you... I just wasn't as invested into it as other people normally are. So did you do a rewatch? No. Huh. <laughs> I forgot to do the rewatch. Uh, okay. Well, anywho, as for me, I like this episode. This episode was a lot of fun, but the whole adult not being at the camp as guardians or caretakers was a bit worrying. But all I had to do was, it's just a show. I should just really relax. Yes. But other than... It doesn't work for me. <laughs> so, but anywho, the, um, the song was... Fun. I, I like the song. It had that tune that I really enjoy. I, I think it was similar to jazz or big band or whatever it is. I, I like that kind of song. And looking at the expression on the pony's faces, um, like Sweetie Belle's screaming match with Rumble, that was a lot of fun to see. The meme-tastic ponies, ponies everywhere uh, with Scootaloo and Rumble, that was also fun to see. And yeah, Thunder Lane had some creepy moments, but yeah, it was fun. It was still fun. But other than that, I enjoyed this episode. Oh, by the way, Silver, did you notice the brown coat with the blue mane? I believe I did. Yes, uh, he's the baby unicorn. Yes. Does he remind you of anyone? Let's see here. I gotta get back into the Marks and Recreation Gallery because you made me look up the comics. Sorry. Norman. I'm sorry. Norman. He looks, yeah, he looks like a certain way lo lost stallion back from the shadows mm -hmm. oh, yeah yeah but i could have put my finger on it hmm maybe we maybe after a few more episodes we can discover <laughs> it's it's the bowl cut the bowl cut makes you look evil <laughs> yeah it's called follicle profiling and it works <laughs> but anywho i i like this episode the moral for this one was fun too and also says that you may be good at something but you still can enjoy other things too so yay much fun. But anywho, that is this week's episode review. We're not going to say what we're going to do next week because uh, the release schedule for this one is going to be topsy-turvy because of recording schedule. Yay! So, Yay! Yay! But anywho, yeah. whatever it is that we're going to review next week, I'm sure we're going to have fun and we're going to have fun too. So anywho, if you guys would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com. With every support, you'll get early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I'd like to thank Lurker, Cat, Star, Stream, Master of Lag, uh, Amy, Mark, Charles, Lucky Knight, and also Tristan. Thank you guys so much. You guys have been really, really awesome. And Seppi, you want to shout out your Patreon thingy? I just want you guys to buy me a coffee. Same same link, coffee.com slash Christie. Also, I stream on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Twitch. So look me up. Alrighty then, alrighty then. <clears throat> so, anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil of the And I am a Safi Unicorn. And we'll guys catch you next week with another episode of the MBS Show. See ya. Adios. Bye-bye. So, does this mean we have to keep doing this every time? Because it seems that our destiny is to record non-stop. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.